Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. The popular television series Fringe shows muted blue images just before going to commercial breaks. If you look closely, you notice they all possess a surreal element incorporated on or within them. I created this one of a beetle that possesses the transcendental mathematical symbol known as pi on its back. I'll show you step by step how I created it. The size of this document is 8 by 10 inches with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. Go to Select and Color Range. Click on the highlight reflection on the beetle's back and increase the fuzziness. This will create a selection based on the color range we chose. Press Q to make it into a quick mask. We're going to isolate the reflection highlight on the beetle's back so press B to call up your brush tool and start painting everything around the highlight. When you've finished, press Q to make it into a selection and then we'll save it by going to Select, Save Selection, type in Highlight and press OK. Go to the Layers panel and press the New Layer icon. Press Alt or Option Delete to fill the selection with white. Type in Highlight Grab the beetle layer and drag it to the new layer icon to make a copy. Or you can press Ctrl or Command J to make the copy. Call up your clone stamp tool and clone the lighter areas onto most of the black markings on the beetle shell until you have enough open space to apply the pie symbol. Let's cut the beetle out from its white background. I'll choose CS5's quick selection tool and choose three pixels. Click and drag around the beetle and then press Alt or Option to delete the selection from the smaller areas it covered. Press Q to change it into a quick mask and press B to call up your brush tool. Make your brush size small by pressing the left bracket key and paint in areas the selection missed. When you're done, press Q to make it into a selection. Go to Select, Save Selection and we'll type in Beetle. Let's make the shadows a little brighter. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Shadows Highlights. We'll use 35% for the amount. I'll call up a couple of fringe images for color reference. I'll press back on our beetle document to make it active and press Ctrl or Command U to call up the Hue Saturation window. Drag the saturation all the way to minus 100 and press OK. We're going to make our image into a duotone, but before we can do that, we need to change the image mode to grayscale. Go to Image, Mode, and Grayscale. Notice duotone is grayed out. This is telling us that at this point, we can't change it into a duotone. Click Don't Merge and Discard. Notice if we go back to Image and Mode, duotone is not gray anymore, which means we can choose it. The Duotone Options window will open. Black is one color, and the other color I'm choosing Pantone 2915C. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. By clicking on this arrow and finger icon, we can choose a specific area of our image to adjust it. I want to brighten the midtone of the shell, so I'll click on that area. We can see it represented in our Curves window. Now we can click and reposition it as well as other areas to adjust the contrast. We'll close out our fringe images and open up our Pi document. Call up your Magic Wand tool and click anywhere on the symbol. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut out the Pi symbol and place it on its own layer. Click on the Pi Documents tab and drag it out to unnest it. And then click on the cutout pie symbol and drag it onto the Beatles document. Close out the pie document. Press Ctrl or Command T to call up the transform tool. Click anywhere inside the transform box to move it in position. Press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option as you click and drag in on a corner to reduce its size. When you're done, press Enter or Return. Go to Filter, Distort, and Pinch. The pinch window will open. I'm going to distort it minus 54%. Click OK and then press Ctrl or Command T to call up the transform tool. Resize and position it and then press Enter or Return. 
Go to the Layers panel and press Control or Command as you click on the layer. This will call up its selection. Go to Select and Refine Edge. We'll feather it out one pixel. We'll click off the eyeball of Pi to hide it and then click on the retouched beetle to make it active. Press Control or Command L to call up the Levels window. We'll slide the output levels to the left to make it darker. In order to better see the Pi symbol on the beetle, press Control or Command H to hide the selection. Continue adjusting the output and input levels to match the contrast of the dark markings on the beetle. Press the New Layer icon. Since black is our background color, press Control or Command Delete to fill the layer with black. Click on the Pi beetle and then go to the Channels tab and press Control or Command as you click on the beetle channel to call up its selection. Click back on the Layers panel and press Control or Command J to cut the beetle out from its white background using its selection we just called up. Click off the beetle on the white background to hide it so we can see the cutout beetle on a black background. Let's rearrange some of the layer order. Drag the black background under the cutout beetle and the Pi symbol under the black background. Click on the Pi beetle to make it active. We'll rename this Beetle Pi. Click on the FX button and choose Inner Glow. The layer style window will open, the blend mode will be screen, opacity is 75 percent and will increase the size to 6 pixels. Right now our black background isn't really black because the image mode of our document is duotone. We need to change the mode back to RGB to make the background truly black. So go to Image, Mode, and RGB. Click Merge. All the layers merged into one. In Channels, press Control or Command as you click on Beetle to call up the selection. Go back to Layers and press Control or Command J to cut the beetle out. Press Control or Command as you click on the New Layer button to make a new layer directly below the active layer. Since black is our background color, press Control or Command Delete to fill this layer with black. Notice the background will become darker. We'll open up one of the fringe images, call up our rectangular tool and drag a rectangle around all the text. Press Control or Command J to cut the selection from the image and paste it onto its own layer. Unnest this document and then click on the layer with the rectangle of text and drag it onto our beetle document. Then drag the flower document back up onto the tabs. Click back on our beetles document and press Control or Command T to call up the transform tool. Go to a corner and press Shift Alt or Shift Option as you click and drag the corner in. Click inside the transform box to reposition it. To accept the transform, press Enter or Return. We're ready to add the yellow glows that you can see surrounding all of the fringe images. Click on the black background and press the New Layer icon to make a layer above it. Open up one of the fringe documents and press the letter I to call up your eyedropper tool. Then click on the yellow to pick up the color. Minimize the fringe document and press the right bracket key to make your brush larger. Bring the opacity down to around 25% or so and randomly click on a few areas. I'll increase the opacity to 100% and decrease the size of the brush by pressing the left bracket key. Now click once in the center of each glow. Change your foreground color to white, decrease the size of your brush even smaller, and click once in the center of each glow. So here is our final image uniquely suited to be part of Fringe's collection of surreal versions of everyday objects. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.